y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be bringing y'all my November wrap up. Maybe you can tell, maybe you can't, but you can hear the <laughs> probably through this video. I've been sick for a couple days if you would have checked out my last video, which was my Thanksgiving reading vlog, you would have seen the full extent of how bad my voice sounded. Today I'll be telling you about the eight books that I read in November. And also, yes, my bookshelves have changed a little bit. Since I was sick, I had to rearrange my room because my bed was next to my window where it's 30 degrees, that's how cold it is, and I realized my window does not fully shut. So I was like, maybe that's a reason why I'm getting sick or something. So I moved my bed and everything in my room around. So now we have kind of like a wider bookshelf. We have some plants over here because since the plants were also my windowsill, they were killing many of them. So they're now on the bookshelf. We have my red books that way. Those are all the books I have read that are on my shelves. And as usual, sorry for the ring light, all the books I have not read on the shelves over here. And also before I start this video, I want to say that I'm going to be starting a new edition for every video that I do. I'm going to be doing a small booktuber shout out at the end of every video that I do now. Hopefully that will motivate me to watch more booktube videos. My watch later playlist is so long at the moment. I've just been super busy. So hopefully with me implementing this new tradition thing on every one of my videos, it will get me to watch more booktube videos. So stay tuned to the end of this video to see who will be shouted out as a small booktube creator. Oh, and most of the time they will be booktube newbies pretty new. I wanted to spread the love for booktube newbies out there. Anyways, let's get on to the wrap up. I read three physical books, one of which was a buddy read, one ebook, and I listened to four audiobooks. Audiobooks were my life in November. So first I read Written in the Stars by Aisha Saeed. This is all about a girl named Nalia who lives in a very traditional Pakistani family. And Nalia is having some trouble because she is in love with a boy from her school named Saif who is also Pakistani but his family has a little bit of a bad reputation about them. They are the gossip of their community in the United States in their town. Nalia knows that her parents will never ever support a relationship or a marriage to Saif. And so the summer before she goes to college, her parents plan a trip to Pakistan. And little does she know that that trip is solely to give Nalia a husband. That's basically what the synopsis says. That's a summary for you. That is not the book. A lot goes on in this book. There are trigger warnings. Didn't know there would be trigger warnings. There are trigger warnings for this book for abuse, sexual assault, rape. A lot happens in this book that you do not expect from the summary. I just expected a YA story kind of like when Dipple met Rishi where they basically get set up in a uh, arranged marriage kind of thing. It sheds a l the light on certain people and certain things that people from different cultures have to go through and it broke my heart. I really thought this book shed light on an important subject that we need to know about. However, I ended up giving this book a 3.75 out of 5 stars just because I thought the writing was very juvenile. I think it was very dumbed down. I think it could have been way less simple. A lot of the stuff that, that happens in this book are told in simple sentences or simple words when I think it maybe could be a little bit more elegant. Hopefully that made sense. I was very confused by the ending. The epilogue, I didn't think it was needed. I have like a mini little panic attack during this book. I have never experienced ever any of the trigger warnings that I just said, but I had a panic attack reading about what this person is going through. It broke my heart. Next book that I read was actually an audiobook and it is Royal Dragon by Charlene Hartnady. And this is the first in the Bride Hunt series and I actually really really enjoyed this book so I do like to go on audible a lot and this one sounded really appealing to me I love paranormal romance if y'all don't know I love paranormal romance so much so this one all set around these dragons they have it's called the hunt but it's not really hunt basically they don't have a lot of women in the dragon culture dragon area so once or twice a year they put on a hunt 
to basically get all their sexual frustrations out to willing women. It's not against their will or anything. Basically, this king knows that they need more women and they need children. He basically sets up this hunt, except this time men are hunting finding women to be their mate and um, their life partner and to have children with. And so this is basically the hunt for a wife. And so that's what this story is about. And I really, really enjoyed it. I give it a four out of five stars. I thought the narrators did a great job and overall really enjoyed this story. The second book that I listened to was Water Dragon by Charlene Hartnady. This is the second book to the series that I just talked about. Basically it's just um, about another woman and dragon shifter who participated in the hunt, hunt for the perfect bride or the bride for the dragon shifter. And I'm not gonna go into specifics. It is the second book, but I really enjoyed this one too. Kind of like a plot twist thing happened at the end. I didn't enjoy it as much as the first book, but I did enjoy it nonetheless. The next book that I read, I was really in the mood for another alien paranormal romance book. So the next one that I read was Alien Instinct by Tracy Lauren. And this is about a girl. She ends up being captured in her home by evil aliens who want to sell her as property, as a pet, as a sex pet for other aliens out there, which is disgusting. Until this good <laughs> alien guy stumbles across her one day and rescues her from her evil captor. She has some alien heritage she does not know about, so that kind of goes into the story. Just a bunch of space travel, traveling to new planets, both of these characters developing feelings for each other, that kind of thing. I thought it was okay. I gave it a three out of five stars. Um, I don't know, basically kind of like an insta-love kind of thing that I didn't really support 100%. I think it was too insta-lovey for me, so that's why I gave it a three out of five stars. The next book that I read was Afraid to Fall by Sutton Bishop. I downloaded this book on NetGalley. This was sent to me by the publisher through NetGalley for an honest review. So this story is basically just about a woman who is an anthropologist who goes to Guatemala to hopefully discover some things about the Mayan people that we have not discovered yet. And while she's there, she meets her boss who happens to be the guy who she's been flirting with for the first couple of days that she's been there. Things get flowing. You can infer what happens with that. I overall enjoyed this book. I found it very addictive. I kept wanting to know what was going on, what was happening, but the first maybe middle, beginning, middle, middle part, I was a little bored. I did think that the ending like kept me on the edge of my seat, but I um, predicted it. I predicted what was going to happen. Also, I did not think the epilogue was necessary. I think that the story could have wrapped up nicely in the scene beforehand. We didn't need that last chapter, was not necessary. That was one thing I was kind of upset about. That was just an added scene at the end. That was not necessary when the story could have wrapped up in the scene before. I found the Mayan archeology, archeological, archeo, archeol, archeological, there we go, facts that were all around this book um, because our um, author is an anthropologist, I think. I think that's what it's in the author's note. Um, so I really enjoyed those facts. I didn't know a bunch of that stuff. However, there is like a standard that I think that the author like set for every reader that they should know a little bit of the basics about the Mayan culture. When I don't know anything really about the Mayan culture except Tenochtitlan basically or Tenochtitlan. It's been pronounced too, in too many different ways. I don't know how to pronounce it. That's the only thing that I know is that they lived in Tenochtitlan. So I think she kind of set like a, like a standard that everyone should have known about the Mayan culture when there are many people out there who probably know nothing about the Mayan culture. So that's one thing that I think could have been approved on. And lastly, I did enjoy the romance part of it. The sexual tension was really good. Um, and I really enjoyed our two main characters. I gave this book a 3.75 out of five stars. The next book that I read was Now I Rise by Kirsten White, which is the second book to the anti darkin trilogy. And I buddy read this with Hannah from Being the Bookologist and Bendy from Cop Between Pages. I will leave their channels both linked down below. And we read this book because 
we just really want to read the series and we are actually planning on reading the next installment the last book bright we burn from when finals are over which are probably different dates for all of us but mine is the 14th of december um until christmas so we plan to read this book the third book by the end of christmas and if any of y'all want to join be sure to leave a comment down below we'd love to have you reading along with us yes this is the second installment to the anti-darken series following lada and radu so this is like a gender bent version of vlad the impaler if you don't know who vlad the impaler was he's this big well-known ruler back in the day who ruled transylvania very much known for his cruelty he was the inspiration for the novelization of dracula so that just goes to show how bloody of a ruler he was so this is gender bent and our main character is lada instead of Vlad and it's all about her and her brother Radu and how they are basically sold to the Ottoman Empire for protection from the Ottoman Empire. Um, their father who's the ruler of Transylvania at the time sells them to the Ottomans for protection. The first book is all about them growing up in the Ottoman Empire with a different religion, um, different people basically only have themselves and one other person to rely on in this new predicament that they're in and this just continues the story a couple years later when they're in their teenage years and I loved this so much so much everyone needs to read this series it's so good it's so good i don't really know what else to say about it other than there's one character in here that makes me want to grind my teeth and makes me want to punch him in the face hopefully hopefully our two main characters can end this series with like a high because they've gone through some rough stuff just gotta say i also read this book during my thanksgiving weekly vlog that i did in my last video so i will link that down below if you want to check out my thoughts while reading it i give a little bit of insight into what i'm read what i'm thinking when i'm reading about it more towards the end of the video so if you want to know more of my thoughts go check that out the next book that i read was blood moon part one by s yarvati i was sent this book from the publisher in hopes for an honest review i also talked about this book in my last video the Thanksgiving vlog that I did. I still have no idea how to summarize this book because there are like eight perspectives or 10 perspectives you read from in this book. It's a lot. And that's one point that I have about this book that made me a little bit frustrated is because there were so many points of views, which I think we could have maybe only should have had four. Like we had a cat narrating at one point that wasn't needed. I didn't think that was needed. So since I can't summarize it for you right now, I'm just gonna read the back because I literally have no idea how else to tell you what this book is about. Candy wanted to attend SCAD and become a sustainable artist. Then someone began hunting her and Candy found herself plummeting through a portal to heaven knew where. It sure wasn't Savannah anymore. Widow Cherry Ann sought wealthy husband number three and a salacious sex life. What she found was far more dangerous than expected. Todd just wanted his woman to appreciate him and quit effing other men. Neither was in her nature, but when the time was right, he kept one card to play. Mark Kingsley needed to find his lost possession. Not a forgiven or patient man, he'd stop at nothing to get it back. Absolutely nothing. Thorn wanted to spend the day hunting, but when he came upon a woman foreign to his realm, her eyes captured him. She became the only woman he ever loved. It should have been a love story completed with the happily ever after ending. As fate would have it, the bored gods and goddesses had other plans for these human pawns hosted from two different domains. Okay, so this summary does not really do that great of a job with talking about the story just saying i think that the summary could have been written way better because now rereading it after reading this book yes it does make a little bit more sense but most of it doesn't this summary maybe only categorizes this last half of the book and that is it and also there are like two different sections of this book summary on the back right here talking about a guy named thorn and his relationship with a woman and that doesn't happen until the very last chapter of this book so i didn't think it was very much needed he's probably main character in part two of blood moon but not part one so i didn't think it was not that necessary to put him in it i have many many thoughts about this book if you really want to know what i thought about it please go check out my goodreads review for this book i will link it down below i also want to say there are trigger warnings for sexual assault 
rape, just regular abuse, <laughs> and um, anxiety in the form of panic attacks. I think that the anxiety panic attacks kind of triggered me a little bit. So um, if you very much get triggered by that, I would maybe steer clear of this book. Overall, did enjoy this book. I was very much intrigued. I was very shocked at some of the things that happened in this book because I was not expecting it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad shocked. I was just very, shocked by it. This one is part one. I'm looking forward to part two solely I think because of the last chapter because that's what saved it for me because of the introduction of a new character. So if you want to know more about what I thought of Blood Moon please go check out my Goodreads review that I linked down below. But overall, I gave this book a uh, three out of five stars. And the last book that I read is one that I listened to, and that is Shiver by Maggie Steve Otter. Oh my goodness, I loved, loved this re-listen. I ended up listening to it on my way to my hometown for Thanksgiving break. It's in my reading vlog if you wanna go check that out. But I really, really, really enjoyed this. I love re-listening to this book, but I originally read it back in middle school. I still have my original middle school copy back home. Shiver is basically kind of like related to Twilight in the esque that we have supernatural creatures and a girl falling for one. But this is written by Maggie Seavotter with a much more developed lyrical writing style, which I loved. I think that her writing style is fantastic. I love The Raven Cycle, but I love Shiver way more. But like, I also have that nostal nostalgic feeling when it comes to Shiver because I read them in middle school. Basically, we had this girl named Grace who was attacked by a pack of wolves behind her house when she was around 12 or 11. And while she was being attacked, we had one wolf with yellow eyes protecting her and saved her from the rest of his pack. And ever since then, eight years later, she has been slowly watching him in her woods, like every day, has always been watching him, he's been watching her. Then one day he appears on her doorstep in the form of a boy. I love listening to it. The audiobook is great too. I can't wait to re-listen to the next one. Um, I'm probably gonna do it on my trek back home for winter break after finals. I can't wait for it. And I gave this one a 4.5 out of five stars loved it. Here are the three physical books that I read in November. So now is the time for the new segment on my channel after every video and this is going to be introducing a new booktube newbie at the end of every video. I'm hoping to broaden my horizons and hopefully y'alls with booktube newbies out there. Um, today I'm going to shout out a channel that I discovered today actually and today she posted her booktube newbie tag video. So I am shouting out today um, Steph from Neffa Entertainment. She, today, she asked, yeah, she posted her first booktube video. She's getting into the booktube scene. She's previously done different types of videos, but now she wanted to get into more of the booktube scene. She just seems super funny and relatable and wants to read all of the books out there. So I can totally relate to that. So be sure to go check her channel out. I will also link her channel down below for you guys if you're interested. And also be sure to check out all of my social media. It is link down below my goodreads instagram and my twitter so be sure to check all of that out if you wish to follow me on any of those thank y'all so much for watching and i will see y'all soon with a new video bye